Liège Baston Liège 2020. Should Julien Alaphilippe have been relegated? And in my opinion, why you should actually be disqualified for future races. Uh, and we're going to go through all of this. So this is in the last kilometre. Julian Alaphilippe is in the front. Mark Hershey's second wheel. Then we have Primoz Roglic. Then we have Tadej Pogacar. And then Matej Mohoric is coming from behind. Skip to the next slide. Um, just a little bit ahead. And Matej Mohoric is now, you know, goes for the obviously what makes sense. The long one. He's just caught them by surprise. Maybe they'll hesitate. Everyone's like, oh, OK, we need to respond to this. Alaphilippe's on the front. Alaphilippe then, as you can see here, obviously on the right hand side of the road, is decides that he needs to go across and follow Mohoric. So at the moment, nothing crazy. Obviously, Chase is in the background, but they're, they're quite far off. Uh, so we go to the next slide. Obviously, some of these I'm going to have really close and some of them a little bit further away. Uh, Alaphilippe's now looking backwards. He's figuring out where everyone else is. Roglic's last wheel, then Bagaccia, Hershey, uh, Alaphilippe. And he knows that he has Mohoric now, right? Uh, the gaps between them... Uh, they've obviously split across a slightly diagonal, uh, but we'll, we'll keep going. So you can see the time. We're now four seconds ahead. Nothing's happened. They're all just in a straight line. Uh, Mohoric just leading out. I guess he knows now he's he, the best he can get is fifth. Um, and now we have Mohoric on the front. Uh, Roglic is about to launch. Alaphilippe is looking um, straight forward. Hershey's on his wheel uh, and Pogaccia. So now we go to the next slide. And this is where it gets very, very interesting. So... If we're gonna get, I'll get my pen out, um, and we're gonna we're gonna draw some draw some lines. So you can see this is basically like Morich line. This is what you could say Alaphilippe line. This is what we could say Hershey line. This is what we could say Roglic line. So you expect in a normal sprint, okay, it is curving. You can see around here it's a curve. So you'd expect a little bit of like going towards the barrier, okay? That's understandable, but roughly they should stay in these lanes that I've drawn out here. So now we're going to go to the next slide. So Moritz is gone. Alaphilippe's now on the left-hand side. So he's on this trajectory here. We then have Hershey here. So it looks like he's springing straight. There's a gap here. So we'd probably get a Pogaccia lane in between here and a Roglic lane would be somewhere out here. So this is if we're on the track, like athletics, for instance, this is what we'd roughly expect. You'd expect Alaphilippe to go as close to the barrier because that's the shortest route. So why would he go anywhere else? Uh, you'd expect Hershey, if anything, to come close to Alaphilippe um, and I guess trying to get the shortest route and everyone else to follow in the draft. So at the moment, nothing has been untoward. You can see what's going to happen. If this is a normal bunch sprint, this is what you'd expect. Maybe you might get Pagacha diving for um, Alaphilippe's wheel instead of Roglic, but because there's no one behind him, that wouldn't be an issue. So that's fine. So then what we have is the next part. So we now have, again, we'll draw the lines out just so you can see, because I want to make it really obvious and clear. So again, nothing's happened. Apart from Pogaccia moving right, didn't hit Roglic, no worries, everything's perfect, okay? Um, it's hard to show from this angle, but if you look at this wheel across there, um, that was really badly drawn arrow, but about here, you can see that Roglic is actually behind Pogaccia at this moment in time. Uh, Hershey looks like he's stepping off, um, Alaphilippe uh, and Moric is obviously behind. We're now going to go to the next bit. He started to drift. So if we look between these two, Alaphilippe's here, now Alaphilippe's there. That's a lot longer, right? Out. So he's he's moved, but nothing too crazy. If anything, he's spreading straight and the barrier's going away from him. So again, if we draw the lanes out, we've now got Pogaccio has decided, actually, I want to be on Hershey's wheel and Roglic is now level. But again, if you look at these two things, nothing dodgy has happened because no one was behind him. So this is why there is a little bit of flexibility in the rules, in my opinion, and why we can't judge things 100% the same in every circumstance. But sometimes I think it's really obvious that something bad has happened and that's what today is. So we've now got the most important thing on the whole race. We're going to circle Alaphilippe's face. Alaphilippe realises here Hershey hasn't. He realizes that he's not going to win, All right? So it goes through his mind. Okay, split second. I sprint straight. I come second. Second the age, he doesn't care, okay? It's irrelevant, right? It's win or nothing for Alaphilippe. Option two, chop Hershey or budge him out away a little bit, win. And then that's the thing. Obviously, he doesn't think about the secondary consequences of if that happens, if he gets disqualified. But it's basically, if he continues sprinting straight, down here, he has lost. Alaphilippe only cares about the win in this situation, right? So he moves right or left for him, right for us looking head on. 
Uh, in terms of Pogaccia, Pogaccia has now stepped off. Roglic is again behind his wheel and looks like he's moving this way here. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, so, no, again, nothing at this moment in time is untoward in the sprint. But the next thing is, and you can see from the angle of the front wheel here, Alaphilippe is moving across. Hershey is now basically also having to move across. So before we had the lanes going like this and like this. But now he's going across his lane. He's Hershey is now again moving. This causes Pagacha to move. And you then have Roglic, who you can't really see, but obviously is this, this blob here. He's actually in the perfect situation. So now we go again. You can start to see everyone's bunching up. Handle, his elbows are behind. The bars are locking. It's, it's looking, you know, a dodgy sprint. Obviously, if we look at the time frame at so far, it's only actually been a second in these two two slides. So now we go to the next one and it's game over. He's about to unclip Hershey. The distance Alaphilippe has come off this barrier is unbelievable. If we drew the lane, the lane was like from there straight. OK, that's terrible. We'll get rid of that. Um, we'll, we'll undo that because we, we don't <laughs> we really don't want to show that. Um, but. So we'll, we'll get rid of the, these lines, but. The key point is on this. Is that we had the line and it was on the barrier. He's now come off the barrier. He's now squeezed Hershey. Right. And that's the point. He squeezes Hershey. Hershey can't pass him. He knows he's gone too early, which is why he had to do it. And that Hershey's the strongest sprinter. But Gatcha here again. But you can see the trajectory here. He's going across. He's going across. And same with Bagatcha. So Roglic back here is the only guy who's OK. The next one they've hit. Alaphilippe. Alaphilippe has hit Mark Hershey. Hershey is now across the road completely. If we look at the, the distance of where they were here, again, my lanes were drawn out pretty simply. And then look where they are now. They're in the middle of the road. It makes no sense. The barrier is going left. It's not a natural movement. Alaphilippe's doing this to try and stop Hershey winning. Quip, obviously, this then causes Pogaccia to basically have to hit into him and stop sprinting. You can start to see if we zoomed in here, you'd be able to see that Hershey's shoe has come out. And Roglic is now here straight behind Alaphilippe and is going to zoom down here. And Alaphilippe is going to keep going to the right. Uh, and he's now in the center of the lane. So if we look where he was, my original lane for Alaphilippe was basically this bit here. And that's being generous to him. And he's basically come from here straight across. And that's not acceptable because he's now basically caused Hershey to stop being able to sprint. He's called Tade Pagacha to go flying leftwards. Look where Pagacha is here. Pagacha is about two, you know, in the middle of this lane of traffic. And then we look here and Pagacha has to be on the other side of the road, man, like literally one whole lane away. Then we zoom forward. Alaphilippe lost to Roglic anyway. But the point is this. I mean, I talked to Lantern about this and we both agreed. That the, it's obvious Alaphilippe did this 100% on purpose. And again, it's really obvious because he has the look. This is the key slide. He has the look. He doesn't drift and, you know, oh, sorry, I was just closing the barrier. He does it on purpose to stop the other guy coming through. It was an like obvious thing. And I don't really care what you comment to say and say, oh, actually, you know, it's sprinting. You're allowed to touch. Nah, when you sprint, you sprint straight. You might um, swerve a little bit, but when you look and realize you're getting done like he did and then swerve, for me, that's completely unacceptable. And I think the UCI, if they want to stop people doing this, and obviously we saw the horrific crash in the Tour of Poland where Gronenbergen did almost identical maneuver. If anything, it was slightly better because he didn't look, but I think he knew he was trying to close the door. And here, there's no door to be closed, man. It's the road. It's open. You can't close it. The only way you're going to stop Hershey is by just chopping him, which he, is what he did and forced Hershey to unclip. And you can see from this, it's just an absolute nightmare. And the thing is that the UCI, the UCI, obviously, I mean, the commentators, Carlton Kirby, don't get me started on him, but he, he didn't even mention this at all. He was just talking about Roglic and Alaphilippe celebrating too early. I mean, let's be honest, Alaphilippe chopped Hershey and Pogaccia, who both would have been Roglic in a sprint, so realistically, Roglic would have come fourth if Alaphilippe hadn't chopped Hershey, who obviously would have won. But the point is, is that realistically, like this, 
penalty, this relegation, does nothing for Alaphilippe. He comes fifth. He doesn't care. It's win or, or lose for him. And this is the issue. Unless the UCI bans him, which is why the title of the video is what it is, I think they have to ban him because otherwise he's going to do the same thing. He's going to go to, well, I'm still cancelled, but he's going to go to San Sebastian, Lombardia, or whatever in the next year. And he's going to do the same thing because, let's be honest, what's, what happens? He becomes fifth. Okay, he's not on the podium, but big deal. If it works, he chops, he chopped um, Hershey, let's say, and he won, then he wins and it, yeah, everything's worth it. So this is the issue. If they really want to stop people doing this, which I think they do, because I think everyone's, everyone's now realised after Poland that actually Sprint is doing this. It's not like a dodgy dark art and wheeling across the road. Now, nah, it's out of order. Because what can happen is really, really bad. Obviously, today, nothing happened, really. Hershey's alive. Hershey didn't get crashed, anything else. But Hershey lost the chance to win a monument because Alaphilippe couldn't hack it that he was going to beat him and chopped him. And this is the point, is that because Hershey didn't win or anything else, it's just a massive miscarriage of justice for Hershey and Pogaccia. And also, I just think if you really want to make the cycling a safer, fairer sport, which I think most people do, especially safety, the riders are kicking off left, right and centre about safety, then you've got to ban Alaphilippe. You know, maybe a couple races only. It doesn't have to be big, but it just has to be an a statement of intent. A statement of intent that this isn't acceptable anymore. If you're going to get beaten, you just take it. If you try and chop riders, then you're not racing. Because let's be honest, Sagan, you know, with Cav, that was the same thing, wasn't it? I mean, obviously, it was a more uh, it was a more violent thing in some people's eyes, etc., etc. It was more obvious what happened is what I meant to say. It's more illustrative because it's like, this is what happens when you chop a rider. But he chopped him and OK, he didn't crash. But in my eyes, the intent was so much worse than almost anything I've ever seen. The look there was like, hey, I'm chopping you. Cheerio, lad. Done. And it, it was horrendous. Um, and, and that's why I think he has to be banned. Um, just not as Alaphilippe. I really like Alaphilippe. I, you know, I'm a big fan of him and I love his world championship win, etc, etc. So it's not me on Alaphilippe. It's me on any rider who does this because it's just not acceptable. And, you know, we've seen what happened, especially Quickstep should know. I mean, we, we got the head of Quickstep, Patrick Lefebvre, saying that Dylan Gronovain should go to court for murder. I mean, like, it's exactly the same move. OK, there was no injury again, but it's, it was worse because he looked over. He saw that he saw her. She coming and chopped him. And it's just, yeah, I think this is one of those things where cycling just has to say, if you deviate from the sprint, you get relegated. You get if it's a stage race, that's it. You're out. Cheerio. Because until that happens, you'll just get more and more people doing dodgy things. And I think the point is, is that there should be some leeway. Like, as we've seen, and I was trying to point out, was that Pogaccia and Hershey they were, and Roglic, they were changing our lines behind. So you can change your line. That's OK. But it's the commencement of the sprint is when you can't. When you're like going f like, and, you know, obviously there's interpretation. There's interpretation with every single law in cycling, especially because it's such a fluid thing. But I think everyone understands that when he's gone here and Alaphilippe has launched it, there's no tactical thing. It's not like if Hershey went in front of him, then he hopped on his wheel. That's different, you know? That's okay because it's not. It's like, you know, he's stayed, okay, obviously he's changed lane and all the rest of it, which I was trying to show before, but he, he, he's not endangering anyone. And also he's trying to, like, he's trying to get on the draft. That's not, that's, you know, that's just acceptable behaviour. But when it's a head-to-head -head drag race and you just chop him like that, then I, I just can't understand how the UCI will not ban him. Because if they don't, people are going to keep on doing it because, again, you want the win. It's the same with Gronewegen. Like, Gronewegen, let's say, OK, I'm not going to say if he did it on purpose as much. I think he did because I've seen some dodgy stuff he did to Oli Nason in Tour of the Euro Metropole 2017, which most of you probably haven't watched. But if you have, then you'll see some dodgy behaviour happen there as well. Um, it might have been 2016. It was one of those two. Um, but, like, you know, for Gronewegen, if he comes 10th, you know, if he comes second and third in the Tour of Poland, he don't care. He wants to win. So he'd rather risk it, get relegated or no, whatever, pay 200 euros to the UCI. Um, then, and maybe he gets away with it, he wins the stage. And I think that's the thing. You just have to have the point that it's not worth it at any level to chop and danger and danger another rider in a sprint when it's so obvious. Okay, there's always going to be points where there's contention and stuff. But I think when it's so obvious like this, when you know there's two head to head and someone tries to, you know, chop you, then you've, you've just got to get banned. Uh, and that's my thoughts. Obviously, most of you, I reckon, are going to have different opinions and think Alaphilippe, you know, it was a bit harsh or, you know, he should have just got relegated. But for me, I think if you want to have a safe sport, which cycling it seems to get more dangerous, then 
you've got to, you've got to send out a statement. And the biggest statement you can send is to the new world champion that if you chop someone, you stop Mark Hershey from winning, you could have caused a crash. And if you do that, then you have to get banned for the next, you know, couple races. No, I'm not talking seasons. I'm just talking like two weeks. That would be enough of a statement that people would think twice about chopping riders. Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this commentary and the screenshots and everything. Um, I hope I tried to show off as best as I could. Obviously, I can't use the footage. Um, but cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.